and welcome back to another episode of our podcast called Access to Perspectives Conversations. Today we're joined by Frank Landon Bentham, who is the director of Africa OSH. And Africa OSH is the satellite program or organization really um, of GOSH, the Gathering for Open Science Hardware, which is a global community of open science enthusiasts and activists and innovators and with Africa Ash we have a regional chapter of GOSH and yeah and I'm very glad to be able to welcome you to the show um, and then thanks for joining uh, us. Thank you for having me Joe. Okay to start right into the conversation and to understand better and getting to know you a little before we talk about Africa Ash in more detail um, tell us about your Vita and what brought you to where you are today and what is your connection to open science hardware and innovation and the work you do now with Africa Osh and other projects? Uh, uh, interesting question. Uh, I think what really attracted me to, brought me to open science hardware is the whole notion between uh, behind it sharing uh, knowledge and sharing designs. Growing up in Africa, we don't really come across um, these sort of things. You don't really come across uh, design. You don't get to use science hardware, especially when, when I was in school. So the whole idea of making uh, or creating a, uh, a community or an Africa where open uh, hardware is very accessible and we could share blueprints and designs. It was really intriguing. It was something that I wanted to be a part of. I thought, okay, yeah, this is, this is cool. This is something that uh, I, could, I could go for. This is something that I personally have been doing because going in school, you don't really get, when doing science and ICT, they're not enough equipment to work with and making hardware, science and innovation hardware available to African students and whatnot. It's, it's something that I'm, I'm quite passionate about. So I would say, yeah, that's, that's what brought me here. And so far, I have enjoyed my stay. I'm enjoying my stay here. Yeah, and your passion really shows in the work and the way um, Africa is co um, communicating to uh, the followers. I'm also glad to be a member of the Africa Osh community and having attended the first and um, second summit. Um, the first was also the birthplace for Africa Archive, which we might be coming to talk about in a few minutes, a little bit. Um, and what, like, what, what have you done before joining Africa Osh? What's your background that now aligns and, and brings in the skill set that you provide to the organization? Before Africa Ash, I, I used to work uh, as an administrator for a travel and tour company. But my interest in science was, has always been there since, since high school. I'm more of a tinkerer. I like to mess around with hardware. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I think growing up, I had to, had to change paths and that kind of got lost along the way. But I'm glad I found it. and. Yeah. yeah, it's a nice example of sometimes um, opportunities or career paths make us lose or lose connection to what we're wired to do in life or what we feel we can easily be passionate about. And then another opportunity comes around the corner and it's a matter of grabbing it or, or noticing that, oh, that's actually what I really want to do yeah. um, instead of jazz which is also important with securing livelihood um and um but then finding ourselves more or less happy or rather less happy in the work that we do but oftentimes like i found for myself these are also opportunities to build the skill set that then prepare for the next step where we can then align our skills that we've acquired in previous placements with the passion and the vision and mission that we develop over the years. Um, 
as professionals. And now you in the position of the is it the director? What how do you call the position? The executive the manager. Yeah. <laughs> um, so steering such a big community and also innovative and highly diverse community. Yeah, I agree. It's a it's a great um, opportunity and they seem to be a great match also or obviously are a great match to fulfill the position yeah so how's your journey with africa been so far um i've observed um, um that you've built um several connections there's been um opportunities and partnerships that evolved and um new ones um after the first and second year of operations have also emerged other partnerships that have been long-standing have been fostered further so how do you how do you see you engaging with the team and with the wider community and the projects that you're currently working on uh yeah uh yeah so far it's been it's been fun so to speak but it's also been very uh, insightful and ed educative we're, we're still growing our community we're not where we want to be and uh, we want to make open science hardware, you could get us by 2025. And we are trying to, we want to grow up, we want to have um, more or less one of the biggest communities in Africa and on the continent. So that's also part of the plan. So yeah, but so far, um, I'm glad, I'm glad I'm here. I'm just privileged to be here, to be interacting with so many uh, smart people and so many uh, world changers. It's it is it's quite a journey and I'm just privileged. I'm just honored to be here. Yeah, that's great. So talking about some of the member organizations, can you highlight maybe two or three that come to mind? Well, there's plenty. Like how many organizations were there in the community? I think around 80 or more than hundred now. Uh yeah, we were at the Depends how you count also. I know that in the first two summits we had registrants, I think around 40 for each, and that's how the community also grew over time. Yeah. Um and then of course, as as everywhere, some community or some organizations are more active members and others, but it, it always shows that they're through the community com communication channels that um Africa also also provides with Twitter, um, Facebook, the YouTube channel, there's much learning opportunities and yeah. networking opportunities on a peer-to-peer -peer level, which doesn't necessarily reach management um, of the organization. Um, but yeah, so basically coming back to the question, what are um, examples of projects that community members are working on that make that bring Africa Osh to life? Project community members are working on. Um, <laughs> okay, <laughs> let me see if I can. I, I can think of a few. Um, there is this uh, hub innovation hub in Ghana called uh, IoT Net, which is a uh, hub that's focused on uh, IoT development in Ghana and Africa. They are working on some really interesting, interesting stuff. Also, uh, there is. Ecolab, e yeah, Ecolab is in uh, Togo. It's in Togo, and they've also worked on uh, during the COVID nineteen pandemic. They, uh, I think, they developed a, a ventilator, which is uh, which was really really cool. Yeah, yeah, you see, when his team they developed a, a ventilator. Okay, great. Um, so basically, topics that um Africa Osh members are work or circulating around ecosystem um, preservation in some sort, um, like tech-based um, measurements of pollution, citizen science projects, yeah. um, developing devices for, um, or for example, also um, um, 3D printers that are basically yeah. um, self-assembled or physically locally produced. Locally manufactured, yeah. Um, such kind of things. And then also the bioeconomy lab. Um, the bioeconomy lab where Harry is, yeah. 
um, Kumasi Hive, obviously, with their projects, and then um, in Cameroon, we'll um, more lab. More lab, which yeah. is also doing molecular biology with yeah, enzymes. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, there's quite a range in in projects and initiatives that try and utilize affordable hardware, meaning self-assembled or assembled from um, what others would call trash, but recycled materials, um, locally um, locally available materials that are affordable instead of having to ship in um, yeah. regions or um, compartments from um, yeah from what's the word now from, from Europe yeah. yeah from Europe or other expensive equipment. Yeah. Um, so the idea that also Afri or that Africa Asia aligns with also the GOSH um, roadmap is to democratize hardware, basically yeah. for multiple purposes. You know? And then also towards um, and across different sectors, academia, um, industries, so to say, or the intersection innovation in academia um, towards economic drive and just exploring opportunities also around various topics. I think I remember there were also projects that were dealing with um, fashion, so to say, or recycled or sustainable fashion projects. Um, um, with recycled materials and yeah and then more tech-based um, projects okay yeah. so to um to foster community engagements you're also facilitating for example a webinar series um mm -hmm. where we're also um glad and honored to be able to present as africa archive um so what was the idea behind the webinar series and what was the response also by the community and how do you see that um, um, the discussions fueling the community um, networking? Uh, okay, so uh, after the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus in 2020 and 2021, the community was dormant for a bit there wasn't much interaction during uh, that period so the whole idea behind the webinar series was to reignite the interest among uh, community members uh, sort of start from the basics which we, we did with the introduction to open science and you were on it thank, thank you for being a part of that <laughs> so mm, yeah <laughs> The idea was also to reignite the the flame. Let me use the word flame, and also uh, as part of uh, an onboarding process for new members in the community to introduce them to Africa Arts and community, the movement of open science and open science hardware. Also, mm. great. Um, and then there's also um, thankfully, like we now as or as travel bans have been lifted lately or yeah fingers crossed there is now uh, um, the organization of a third summit on the way which third is summit, going to happen yeah. in Cameroon can you tell us a little bit more about that like and unfortunately just to um to burst that bubble registrations are closed um I've seen but nonetheless, are there opportunities for listeners to still participate in one way or the other, or to um, then later see the outcomes of the conference? And how's the organization coming together? Yeah, um, unfortunately, registration is closed, but uh, we're trying to make the summit a hybrid one. So we can have an online session and also an in-person session at Tomorrow Lab in Cameroon. So all details of the online session will be will be made known in due time. So, but so far we're still we're still uh, organizing it. We're still in the preparation period. So, is is things are ramping up. It's a lot of work, but we're handling it. So, hopefully, after the two year break due to COVID, 
uh, we're trying to make this one as uh, as insightful and as educative and as interactive as possible because we took a very long break from from meeting and uh, you know, we want our test summit to be, be special, kind of like a rebranding, like it's starting from from scratch, so to speak. Yeah. So the third summit is supposed to bring together all our community, old community members and also uh, in this period, the new community members that have joined also to have an opportunity to interact with uh, fellow community members, skill sharing, knowledge sharing and whatnot. Mm. And what are the themes that are set for this year's event? Pardon? What are the themes, the topics that are? Uh, so the theme for the for this year's summit is the growing is going to do it yourself, do it together culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a focus on open science. Uh, sorry, a focus on uh, open health. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and what's entailed in the open health um project? So does it also? Um, include veterinary studies or, or topics or is it purely human health? Um, we're okay. trying not to limit it, you know, uh, we're trying to include workshops around all regions of open health. Yeah, and also like, for example, the Mozilla Foundation, um, they often talk about internet health, but this one is, is it focused on on human health primarily, or also diverting into other health systems that are more technical? Or like, what were the submissions that you've received? Um, or what are some of the examples of uh, presentations that uh, the audience can can expect to, to observe? Um, yeah, there are a few. Let me, let me find a couple for you to see. We've received quite a, a number of uh, presentation and workshop ideas. We're still compiling them and coming up with the program outline. Mm -hmm. But like I said, we're trying not to restrict. Uh, we're trying not to restrict it. So we're focusing on open health as a whole. We've got quite a lot of uh, mm -hmm. workshop titles and presentation titles. So we're kind of going through them at the moment. Right. Okay. Cool. And um, so the wider network of Africa Oshna, um, I understand it's embedded also in the MAKE project. Can you tell yeah. us a little bit more about what that entails, what MAKE is, and and what role Africa Osh plays in it? Okay. So now MAKE is the acronym for the African European innovation maker, maker innovation ecosystem, sorry, the African European maker innovation ecosystem. So make is spelled M, uh, little M, capital A, little K, capital E. So the capital A and the capital E signifies Africa and Europe. So uh, the project aims to promote uh, cooperation and strategic partnerships between digital innovation hubs in uh, Africa and also in Europe. Uh, the overall aim of the project is to strengthen the EU-AU uh, partnership and um, also it focuses on uh, connecting makerspaces, makerspaces in Africa and also in Europe in, in particular regard to uh, digital and local manufacturing and innovation. Now, uh, Africa Ash is, is a consortium partner of this of the project and uh, we, the reason why we are part of the project is the goals of the projects uh, are in line with most of the Africa OSH goals. Uh, the training of uh, organizing skill sharing and training sessions for SMEs and uh, for startups or makerspace members to, to enable sustainable uh, capacity development is one of the reasons why we are also part of the uh, of the project and also um, strengthen the collaboration between digital innovation hubs also and uh, implementing and promoting uh, systems for skill sharing machinery uh, contracts among maker spaces to uh, introduction to open 
introduction to uh, uh, <laughs> to open standards. Yeah, that's the word. Introduction to open standards to make the processes easier. So, yeah, these are the roles, some of the roles I've got placed in the make project. It's, an, it's a really exciting project, and we are actually very excited about it and glad we're part of because we see make as the future of uh, innovation in Africa and in in, in Europe. Mm. Yeah, it's, uh, it looks like a platform that is um, excellently placed to provide for access points, also for investors to learn about innovation on the continent, on the interface again of research and innovation. Um, and I understand also in that realm of topics, there is high interest also to invest in the African region by um, European stakeholders. And also African stakeholders, um, yeah. increasingly so. Um, so, what are the other organizations are involved in in the Make project? And okay, so I have to, I have to say this, but Make is uh, is an EU funded project, H twenty twenty project, and uh, there is Africa OSH. Obviously, there is um, Africa Mega Space Network. Mm -hmm. There is uh, Absoha, there is a uh, Fab Lab, Gig, also a part of Make Project and uh, ZSI. Mm -hmm. uh, it's Open Air, Open Air is also a part of the Make Project. So is, we have fifty percent European color uh, partners and fifty percent African partners. Yeah, that's great. And all are specialized and bring in expertise from hardware projects and. Um, tinkering, um, experimentation, and um, also each with their own community, and many also with a regional focus on the continent of Africa. Yeah, I'm uh, really excited about it. IAC, IAC also is part of the project. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, I will uh, add the links to the project website where um, if you're as a listener, if you're interested to learn more, you will find the link to make in the show notes and can explore further and learn about other organizations that are involved. So with make, what's on the roadmap and also for Africa Osh more generally? So what's happening or what's the plan for um, basically now the second half of 22 and forthcoming like in the next one, two or three years? How does the future of Africa look like? And what are well, the goals and milestones that you put in place? Well, hopefully, hopefully, Africa would be uh, a much more bigger, wider community than it is right now. And also, we would, in the coming years, maybe uh, provide the, if not the biggest, then one of the biggest platforms innovation platforms in Africa for African innovators and makers and uh, open science enthusiasts. So people can showcase their, their prototypes, their innovation, research results and, and whatnot. We just want to be the, the grand stage where we, we sell Africa to the rest of the world. Innovative uh, projects happening, initiatives happening in Africa and or other really smart people and all the really smart things happening in Africa. Mm. And um, I remember when for the first and second year, the main event was the summit. Is that still the plan to have the summit of, on an annual or, um, or biannual um, basis? Like to have a, a con it's a way. Um, yeah, to organize the summit on a recurring basis, either every year or every other year, and then other off-summit events or community engagement activities throughout the year, or is the format going to change? Um, well, the main event still is the summit, and it's organized on that every year in a, in an African country. Pandemic so slowing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but. We're looking to include uh, capacity building programs and into uh, our events also, and also to continue the webinar series. 
to continue educating uh, community members and everybody on open science and the importance of open science and open science hardware in Africa and mm -hmm. the rest of the world. So, so yeah, but the main event still is the summit because it's the biggest platform that we have and uh, we hope that it, it just it just grows bigger and bigger. We attract more people and uh, get more people to not only understand open science, open science hardware, but also to appreciate and also practice open science and open science hardware in Africa. Excellent. Yeah, that sounds um, very much needed for once, not only in Africa, but as well. I think we all need to learn and, and be more aware of the opportunities that open science hardware provides for our research context. We also, on this podcast, we had um, other shows previously um, that were highlighting um, open science hardware initiatives like um, the open science mentoring program. That up as well. Um, and yeah, so the opportunities are first of all, in like for research context towards more affordable research equipment, but also as you pointed out nicely, um, it allows for engagement with other sectoral stakeholders, um, industry leaders, uh, so innovation hubs, community organizations. Um, community-based organizations um, so it really um, cuts across societal sectors and provides a vast amount of opportunities for collaboration and yeah. solution-oriented project building. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. I think the, uh, the, possibility, the possibilities of open science, they're endless and uh, what 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 we're slowly getting uh you're slowly uh catching some pace with open science in Africa. There have been uh quite a number of open science initiatives in Africa. Mm -hmm. And I think over over the years we've really we've quite developed and um we're, we're attracting more audience now. And uh, hopefully by 2025. <laughs> Uh, open science, open science hardware would be not only uh, appreciated, but it would be practiced. It would be, it would be a, a movement that is continental. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so that, that, that's the goal. Yeah, and to have it as the norm, not something that... Exactly. To have uh, policies that uh, support open science initiatives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, many universities are now discussing open science and open access policies, and I think it's like highly important to include open science hardware into these policy writing exercises yeah. and activities that are currently undergoing. So yeah, thanks for um, thanks for joining us today and for <laughs> um, bringing in your expertise and your experience and sharing with the about the work that you do with Africa Osh and. Congratulations again on the position and um, kudos for your accomplishments thus far. And we are very much looking forward to seeing Africa Osh thrive and flourish. Also the partnership, um, one of which we are also very happy to have with Africa Archive with Africa Osh um, and many other partnerships that you also so um, nicely and professionally are fostering. So thanks for that. Yeah, thanks for having me. And uh, well, as Africa as, as a community, we're, we're striving to make open science, open science hardware, uh, by 2025, and also promote science, technology, and research in Africa. Yeah, we're doing that together. So um, <laughs> um, we are very well aligned. We'll come back to the show anytime you want to share something about any milestone achievements or announcements that Africa Osh wants to make. Um, and yeah, we're happy to hear, uh, looking forward to hearing from you again in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Joe.